Hey, welcome back. It's the Dave Bowman Show, Power Talk 1360-1280, Modesto Stockton, IR Radio, talking stolen valor this afternoon, in case you missed it, up at uh, Delta College in Stockton. Had a little incident this week where we have a phony, fake, fraudulent... That's the blank part where I can't say the word that I wanted to say. Yeah. A soldier by the name of Joe Scott, who pretends to be an E-8, roams around and... And got caught. A couple of a couple of army guys up there. Uh, Chris Vieira is here. Thank you. He is a parachute or was a parachute rigger. Right. Now he's out of the army, right? Correct. Um, a for, his friend, a former ranger, and another guy that filmed this whole thing. Yes. And when you found out that it had been filmed, I asked for the video. You wanted it right then and there, and, and immediately uploaded it to YouTube. Not, well, I got it on Wednesday, and I uploaded it. So I. I the, the incident happened last Monday, and I got it on Wednesday, and I put it on my YouTube page, and then... Were, were you surprised by how much reaction there is to this? Were you surprised at how many Absolutely. how many people are like, dude, you did the right thing? I mean, you got, yeah. we got people calling from Georgia to say you did the right thing right now. Yeah, it's, that's amazing. It, why, why do you think that is? Do, because I think we just, we put a voice to every veteran that, that wants to, oh, he sees those, those fakes out there, the phonies, the people that aren't that are just playing G.I. Joe or want to pretend, and it's, it's, you know, we put a voice to that. So The, the counter-argument is, and this is where I guess, uh, well, I guess we should finish the story before we get to the arguments on this. You, uh, you were told then by the police at some point after this first confrontation to leave this phony, fake, fraudulent bleep hole alone. Right. They said, next time, just leave them alone. Don't confront them like that. I, I told them... Uh, he doesn't have to, you know, you don't have to arrest him right now, but make him take off what he didn't earn. Right. And so uh, when I left school that day, two hours later, he was walking around without his jacket on. Which so t- you wear BDU pants and a T-shirt? or ACU pants and the, the T-shirt. Yep. Oh, Lordy. Well, I guess that's a step in the right direction. But, um, but, but, after, but a real military person would have said, no, I'm, I'm not doing that. Right, and they would be like, "No, I'm I'm proper." What do you right, think? like no. Of course, he would have been proper to start with. And oh, absolutely, that's that's our, so. You were told not to do this, but what happened a couple of days later? A couple of days later, I was leaving to lunch, and I I was walking through the parking lot, and he walked right in front of me again, wearing the E eight rank with uh, the patches on his combat side now, uh, on his right side with the hundred and first airborne with the Ranger tab. With yeah. the, which you would not have right. the the ranger tab on over that patch on the combat side. Okay, so ever. so now so now we've moved this from from one side to the other, which indicates that he's now a combat veteran. Yes, and he's got him out of order. Yes, and to top all of that off, to top all of that off, he has an upside down American flag on his shoulder, and so numb nuts couldn't even get the flag upside right. Right, which I mean that is just super disrespectful to anyone that would recognize that they would be like no all right so you see this and you've been told by the police don't confront this guy honestly i didn't even think about that my mind snapped right back into sergeant mode and i started calling him private and telling him to drop and do push-ups and i was screaming at him in my old sergeant voice that i don't like to bust out too often and uh he immediately called the cops which yeah. further proves my right, point. Right. This, this guy, guy's really a ranger. He's going to kick your ass. Yeah. I think I, if he's really a ranger, really even military, he would have turned around and been like, what? Do something. But yeah. uh, when the cops finally show up, I'm still pointing in this guy's face. Hey, you need to, you need to take this off. This is not right. The, uh, the cops show up. The, they walk up to me. They don't say a word to me. Cop comes up, stands next to me, and puts me in an arm bar, puts me in handcuffs. They, um, you they know, try to call. Right. I didn't resist. Okay. No, I, I give. I showed them all their proper respects, but uh, so they put me in handcuffs. They pull me off to the side. They have me standing there for like twenty minutes in handcuffs. Like all the students are walking by. I'm embarrassed now because I'm in handcuffs, like in front of everybody, and I'm like, "You guys have the wrong guy the, in handcuffs. That guy's the fake." And they they're like, "Yeah, well, we don't care." Like, um. He talked to his commanding officer, and he told him how to wear it properly. I'm like, well, then he lied. I'm like, well, it wouldn't be the first time. And they put me in the back of the cop car. They take me over to their little uh, station there on, on campus. 
They sit me in the little room on the bench. They handcuff me. They unhandcuff me. They fingerprint me. They're questioning me the whole time. I'm like, you know. Did you answer any of their questions? Yeah. I, I answered all, right. all their questions. I, I tried to stay very respectful with them. I mean, I was very worked up. Right. But I'm very passionate that they had the wrong guy. And they insisted that I was still wrong, that it doesn't matter. And, I mean, yeah, I, could, I caused the scene. I could have went about it with more tact, but I had lost it when I saw that American flag upside down. And on his shoulder. On his shoulder. On his uniform, on which his, his, uniform. he says his commanding officer, who, who doesn't have a name, yeah. uh, told him to wear it right. Because that's what a commanding right. officer would say if you yeah. got caught wearing your uniform at a college incorrectly by a ranger, he would say, well, next time, just wear it right, and you won't have that problem. Yeah, just wear it right, and you're not going to have that problem. I'm surprised the cops didn't tell him to um, not wear the uniform on campus, for one. Uh, number two, he is not even a student there. So, like, why would they even allow him back on campus? And then... Well, technically, neither am I, and I was there the other day, so... Oh, nice. I mean, kind of well, kind of, sort of happens. Sometimes. It is an open campus, but, it, I mean, after it the first incident, I would think that they'd be like... Hey, we can't have you on campus. You're riling up our students. But well, and that's that's part of the problem with all this. And, and instructors, by the way, because my my teacher, uh, Professor Via Gomez, is a staff sergeant in the army, and he confronted this guy on Monday as well. What did he say to him? Uh, you was, weren't there because I wasn't there. No, I I just left. But uh, he he dug into him like any self respecting sergeant would do. What do you? How does the student body react to this? Do, do they look at this and go? Why would we want this fake guy in our midst in the first place? I mean, he's not a student, so they can't really shun him. They can't really embarrass him. They can't really throw him out. But right. he's apparently dating somebody who is there. Right. And, you know, God bless her, but your your choice in men is pretty crappy at this particular point. But you, isn't aren't they kind of looking at this going, this is not what we need here. This <laughs> is not what we want here. This is not – I've been to oh, the Delta. So. There's a big – the student center over there on the left-hand side, there's an office that says, you know, Military Veterans Services Office yes, there. the where, Veterans Resource Center. Exactly. They seem Stan very proud Rapata. of it. Yeah. yeah. They seem very proud of their service to veterans and, and how they deal with veterans. And to, to allow something like this seems like the school administration could stand up and go, no, you're not, you don't come here. You would think so. I mean, I, that's what I would, was hoping at least. But, no, they didn't, they didn't do that. They, uh yeah, well, Stan. Stan has been extremely helpful. The mm-hmm. the head of the Veterans Resource Center. He is he has been like the the guiding assistant on my tour at the school. Because uh, as soon as he he found out, he was on it. He was up all night sending phone calls and emails and everything. And and they they banned me from school after I was uh, cited. They told me that I wasn't allowed back on school grounds at all. For how long? Uh, until I spoke to the Vice President of Student Services, Michael Kern. Have you done that yet? Uh, I did that this morning. And how'd that go? It went well. Are you, are you allowed back on the campus? I am allowed back okay. on the campus. That's, that's the important. I was allowed back right. on the next day. Okay. Uh, Stan made sure of that. He, it, I, I tell you, I, I hear stories like this, and of course, it, the, the internet now, I mean, there's some, there's some very high-quality stolen valor type sites the, yes. the military has one somebody says oh i got a medal of honor well the military got tired of that they set up a website saying okay here's the list of people that have yes medals of honor if they're not on this list they didn't get one so anytime anyone tells me they have a medal of honor i'm like how are you still alive tell well, me this epic tale i know one <laughs> guy i know one guy that has one i mean i've met him and yeah and, yeah. and he's the most humble most personable guy you've ever known and you know, I watched three guys get one today, yeah, along with 20, I think, 22 others who are posthumous. And it's just the stories that they have. But very few of them are. I've never seen Sergeant Pittman's medal. I've never seen him with it on. Ever. Right. He's so, not. It's not something people want to display, except in a military proper right. setting. And so there's there's an element to it that that's humility yes. above everything else. And that's why somebody wearing something like that in public for a non, you know, to escort my kid or my girlfriend to campus Mm -hmm. it just sets off alarm bells it really does it does and it it irritates people now one of the things that frustrates me i guess is the the it's no big deal why are you reacting like that yes and um that's actually something jim box said in the news interview that it was just a uniform and 
I mean, that really, it really has set up a lot of veterans and a lot of service members and people because it's not just the uniform. It's, it's what the uniform represents. He wouldn't like it if I walked on the campus with a cop uniform and a gun and a badge. So, Yeah, yeah they'd, probably, they'd probably get a little upset about that, wouldn't they? Right. And, and I'd probably be taken and, down very quickly. They, <laughs> yeah, and yet somehow or another, when it's in a military uniform, it doesn't get the same treatment. 565-DAVE is the telephone number. It's also the text machine, 565-3283. If you've got a question for Chris, we'd love to hear that. If you've got a comment about this, and um, what do you think about... Stolen. What I want you to think about this during the break. What can be done about idiots like Joe Scott, who uh, who dresses up, plays soldier, GI Joe, and goes on our local campuses? This isn't, this isn't something, some theoretical thing that happened five thousand miles away, or you know, in New York or Southern Cal. This happened here, folks. This is our area. And once again, we're in the front pages of the news around the country for this. What can we do to stop jerks like this from doing that? What do you think? Five six five Dave. Back after this.